I'm Sean Real, and welcome to Structural Massage. Structural massage is defined by three main tenets. One is that when we start a session, we do a full body range of motion analysis. This range of motion analysis is really simple and fast, and will alert you to all types of dysfunction that you would not have found otherwise. I have never received a massage where the therapist did any evaluation like this, and I think as a profession, we are missing out on a huge opportunity but there are so many types of tests that it can be daunting. So what I offer here is an easy assessment that you can do with every client. Clients love this work because they can see where they are stuck. And when you retest at the end of the session, they can see how much your work has helped. Testing, working, and retesting is the mantra of structural massage. The next tenet of structural massage is that we apply specific techniques to each joint. And those techniques are static pressure, static pressure with passive motion, static pressure with active motion, and active resistance. What does that mean? So you're familiar with static pressure, that's just pushing in one spot and not moving. That's a very safe, a very um, gentle way to apply pressure to the body. Um, and also really effective, because as you hold on one spot, you can sink down through the tissues. Static pressure with passive motion means finding a spot that may be sore or restricted, applying static pressure, and then moving the joint yourself so the client's completely relaxed through the range. The next step in intensity is static pressure with active motion, and also the next step in effectiveness Static pressure with active motion means you find a place, you apply pressure, and you have the client move their joint themselves through the range. This is incredibly effective. And maybe the other techniques uh, that you applied didn't necessarily increase joint range of motion, but when you get to this, it always is incredibly effective. And it can also be kind of intense. So you don't do this kind of technique on someone who is recently injured. The last technique is called active resistance. And active resistance really comes from muscle energy technique. And that is where you take the joint to the limitation of motion and have the client resist without moving. So isometric contraction. And then after eight seconds, they relax. And then you move to the new barrier. And then they contract again. Then you move to the new barrier. So those are the four styles of body work that we do to each joint. The last tenet of structural massage is to work on your client in a vertical position and to retest. So what I found is through doing range of motion analysis and then working on the clients on the table, oftentimes when I sit them up, especially in the neck, I'll have them go through the range again and notice they haven't maybe increased range that much, even though a second or two earlier when they were laying down on the table, I could have them go through the full range, but as soon as they go vertical, the, the neurology of standing takes over, gravity takes over, and maybe they have some fear. So what I found is that when they are in a vertical position after the session, you sit them up and that you go through the range, you do static pressure with active motion in a vertical position, and it is incredibly effective. It is amazing how you could work for so long on the table uh, in a supine or prone position, and then you get them up and you start working with them um, sitting up, and then the stuff just releases and the range increases, and it is a lot more permanent. Um, so those are the three tenets of structural massage. So this video is organized by joint range of motion and tests. So what this means is oftentimes I will say, a limited flexion or limited extension. And it can get a little confusing. So for example, this motion is external rotation of the glenohumeral joint. And the muscles that do that are the infraspinatus and the teres minor and the, the posterior deltoid. If I have limitation though, if I can't do that motion, it's not the muscles on the back that are causing that to be limited. It's the muscles on the front. It's tight muscles on the front. So it would be the antagonistic muscles that would be the muscles that we would want to work on. So you'll see in the beginning of each section, I say some kind of action like a, a shoulder external rotation. And then it talks about the agonists, the muscles that actually do the action. 
and then it shows the antagonists, the muscles that resist the motion. And always in this video, what we're gonna do is we're going to show a motion, talk about if that motion is limited, what you do, and then we'll work on the antagonist muscles. So in each section, I'll give you clear guidelines of where to work and how to work and why.